We've got our first big Formula One news story of 2019. Ferrari changes at the top. Maurizio Arrivabene is out as team principal and former technical chief Mattia Benotto is in as his replacement. I've got our Formula One correspondent Scott Mitchell from Autosport and Jonathan Noble from Motorsport.com to discuss the big news at the start of January. And Scott, we'll start with you. Is this another case of Ferrari getting trigger happy because of another failure in the championship or this time did this need to happen? Yeah, I think this was uh, an example of Ferrari effectively being been pushed into a, a decision. I think they, they recognise that all that's really missing now, if you compare Ferrari to Mercedes, is, is strong leadership and, and the execution. And um, I think when you, when you compare, compare the two, you, you had a situation last year in 2018, Ferrari had on balance probably the faster car. Um, and it, you can trace basically the capitulation of their season to uh, President and CEO Sergio Marconi's death. And as soon as he was out of the picture, Arriva Bene became much more vocal, much more central, and, and seemed to want to establish himself. And that it didn't coincide with Ferrari's downturn in form. It, it, it was la largely responsible for it. So I think they've, they've acted swiftly because they've realised that they've got someone in, in charge who's not right for it, and they're at risk of losing Bonotto because of a rift between the two of those. And ultimately, Bonotto is the man that you want around longer term, not Arriva Bene. John. You've seen many a Ferrari team boss now because since the ultra successful Jean Todt era, they can't seem to get the right man. Do you agree that maybe Arriva Bene's time was up? I think so. I think what happened last season was when, when he stepped up in the, in the wake of Mark Gianni's death, um, you know, a very aggressive style, and it exposed management weaknesses. We saw the failure to impose team orders in Monza prove so costly when Kimi and Seb were racing each other at turn one and opened the door for Lewis. We saw the strategy errors creeping in in Japan and then Arriva Bene, that remarkable attack on his own team straight afterwards. I think it exposed problems within the system. And I think you and Matteo Bonotta, you know, having spent two years improving the engine, two years improving the car, having produced the best package at times and seeing the, the, what, you know, perhaps the best car operated by a, a team that wasn't as good as Red Bull and Mercedes operationally, I think you would be frustrated. Now, you and Scott have both written about this this week for Autosport Plus and Motorsport Prime. Scott talked about Arriva Bene's time was up and Ferrari's need to get rid of him effectively became desperate, I think was the word mm. that you used. Your piece, John, was about why Bonotto's the right man. As you say, he's turned the team around technically, but what else about the way he works makes him the person to step into the role? Well, I think, first of all, he's a, he's a Ferrari stalwart. You know, he's been there since the 90s. He's worked in all sorts of departments. Um, he understands, you know, the, the, how the, the team operates, how it goes about day to day, how to get the best out of people. And I think what he proved when he took over from James Allison was, it, was allowing the young talent within the team to grow up and speak up and show up. You know, for years and years, we've had no innovation at Ferrari. It was a, a team that kind of followed the trends elsewhere. The last two years, we've seen the Ferrari side pods. We've seen the, the new mirror concepts. We've seen a double battery system on the engine. He's, he's led, he's allowed the youngsters within the team to, to step up, push forwards and help produce the best car and take it on Mercedes. You know, he's, he's allowing it to flourish rather than Riva Benny was trying to kind of crush things down and become a, a, a leader, you know, quite harshly. I think that's the, the big thing, the big difference between the two is um, I think when I was sort of looking into Arriva Bene's time at Ferrari, I, I gave him too much credit because I thought, well, ultimately he was team principal when they had that, that overhaul behind the scenes in 2016 and that's what paved the way to, to the 2017 and 2018 title challenges. Um, but he didn't really have anything to do with that. That was all Sergio Marchioni behind the scenes and then the person really executing the changes was Bonotto. So he was neither sort of planner or, or executor of, <laughs> of that grand vision. So I, I don't see Ferrari losing an awful lot by getting rid of him, but they gain an awful lot with him not being there, and then even more by having someone as good as, as John said, uh, Bonotto in, in charge instead. Now, are there any risks here? I'm looking at two things, really. The timing, we're in January already, so we know that we're very close to the launch of a new car and testing. Is that potentially a risk for Ferrari to make a change this late in the winter cycle? And secondly, if Bonotto has been so good in the technical part of the team, is there a risk that by removing him from that focused role that there could be problems there? Well, I guess the majority of the work on the 2019 car has, uh, has been completed. They'll be in sort of the final sign-off phase, I guess, now before, before testing and then obviously your early updates in, in the season. And the, the, the main thing, I guess, for me is, yeah, it's an element of instability, but you're putting someone in charge who has an amazing calming effect on the team. He does seem to be 
assured that when when he doesn't speak very often, does he? But w when you talked about what Arriva Bene was like last year, how mm. it was weird in press conferences whenever Arriva Bene was there. It was it was attack, attack, well, he attack. He wasn't used to doing them anymore because <laughs> he hadn't done it for two years. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Bonotto, when he spoke, I think he spoke a couple of times, just seemed more relaxed. He just seemed quite, you know, he's just like I'm I'm good. I know I'm good. The guys I'm working with are good. So there's no game to put pressure on or try and assert one's dominance or anything like that so I think you put someone in there is instability but you put someone in who have a good impact on the team so I, I, I mean we don't know how it will play out but I would assume that it will it will play it will pay dividends early on. I think what Fry have got to do is not not um, overload him with stuff um, you know he's not as smart as maybe everybody was in terms of commercial understanding sponsorship because it's not what he's been involved in. Um, and the political stuff, we're, we're coming up to the new Concord Agreement discussions and where we're going from 2021. So I think it's going to be important for Camilleri and John Elkin to make sure that those responsibilities are, are taken on and not overloading Mattia with too much stuff so he can focus on what he needs to do, which is lift the operational side of this team to make the most of the, the current engine they've got.